Revenge of the Electric Car. Joining me now, two of the film stars, Elon Musk is the co-founder and CEO of Tesla Motors. Bob Blood spearheaded GM's Chevy Volt, as you know from our previous conversation. I'm pleased to have them join me now in a conversation about electric vehicles. Um, did I hear you say in that clip, I have not yet seen the movie? <laughs> Anybody <laughs> no. who comes from outside thinks they can do something is going to fall on their butt. Um, yeah, because um, what, what happens is they have a, a, a brilliant thought, and uh, but they have a great deal of difficulty implementing it because they underestimate the knowledge and technology and experience re uh, required to actually build a car. The Elon went through quite a bit of that and we did go after, health, after, I, after about two, after about two uh, years of struggle yeah. they began to think you know maybe those guys in Detroit aren't that dumb after all <laughs> well I never thought the, the guys in Detroit were dumb I, I think that that the, sometimes the media tries to create more of an antagonistic uh, position than is, is really the yeah. case yeah. Um, I, I'm actually really uh, supportive of, of any efforts like the vault or the leaf or, 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 or anything that goes in the direction of sustainable transport mm -hmm. um, the whole purpose behind Tesla, the reason that, that I put so much time and effort into creating it was to serve as a catalyst for transition to electric vehicles. All right. H has he succeeded beyond what you expected? Uh, yes. I think the, uh, I mean, um, um, Elon and, and Tesla had kind of a, a, a rocky spell there. Yeah, with, and, uh, yeah. and the Roadster <coughs> um, being at a, a hundred plus thousand dollar car, but only seating two, that is a very thin market, market segment. Yeah. And after about a year, everybody who wants one has one. But <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost, I don't have mine yet. But, uh, but the transition to the four door sedan, I, I think that is going to open the window to a much broader market yeah. and to a sustainable commercial future. Right. Here's a picture of that four door sedan. What you said to me you think is a fine looking automobile yes i do i think it's one of the one of the clearly one of the best styled uh medium sized to large sized four-door sedans in the world today so are you betting the company on the success of this we are see there straight talk huh yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this has got a success so how did you go about the design um well um first of all i should maybe just if, if preface it by saying that um, the, the strategy of Tesla from the beginning has always been to start with a low volume, high price car, then go to a medium volume, mid price car, and then end up with low price, high volume. Right. Um, and the, the, sometimes people think that the reason we started with the sports car is because I, I thought there was um, a shortage of sports cars for rich people. That, that was not the reason. Um, it, it, it was simply that anything we produced would be expensive because we did not have the economies of scale necessary right. to, to make right. things inexpensive. Um, so having done the Roadster, which was very, very difficult, um, you can imagine as a new car company trying to sell an electric sports car during the, let's call it the worst car market since the Great Depression, mm -hmm. um, presented a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, but we managed to get through that na yeah. uh, narrowly. Um, and, uh, and now uh, we're on the verge of uh, delivering uh, the sedan, the, the, the right. four-door sedan, uh, the Model S. Um, and, and it's really quite a significant leap forward. I can tell you a little bit about that. Um, it's, uh, it's got a range of over, this is pure electric. It's got a range of over 300 miles. There's a performance version that will do zero to 60 in 4.4 seconds, which is faster than a Porsche 911 Carrera. Mm -hmm. um, it, it'll actually be five-star crash rated in every category without exception um, by 2012 standards. This is a very difficult sta thing to meet. In fact, my understanding is that there is not a single vehicle that is five-star crash rated in every category mm -hmm. by 2012 standards. So we will be the only one. So it will be the safest so car So what does world. he need to know, Bob, at this stage? Um, I, I think um, they've, they've got a, a, a obviously a brilliant design staff, a, a very sound engineering staff. They've got a great pr tr production facility in the old NUMI plant in Fremont, in California. Network. Uh, yeah, dealer network is <laughs> dealer network is going to be a challenge. Um, having sufficient marketing money is going to be a challenge, but I think this has a high chance of success. You do? Yes, I do. Because it's got uh, all the things, at least uh, significant, well, the important, you know what, I, it's here, got the important here's, things here's, right. Here's the problem: you've got uh, a sound product, and 90% of this business is having a. Pro as you and I were saying earlier, 90% of this business is having a product that people want. And part of making them wanted is the design. Right. 
Uh, nobody buys an ugly. You could have a 400-mile range. If it was ugly, nobody would buy it. <laughs> I mean, it's sad, but that's it's the, the aesthetics truth. Aesthetics are extremely important. Yeah. So, Absolutely. so it, how much is it going to cost? A uh, starting price of 50000 50000 for the so, car that we just saw. Uh, yeah, starting price. It's, it's, it's kind of like a... See a BMW 5 Series starts at around 50k, goes up to 100k. So if you get the high performance version with all the extras, it could be 100k. But this, the base model is is 50k, and it looks just like the one you you just pictured. Mm -hmm. So uh, the movie, yeah, uh, what it documents is the fact that that what you did in announcing the Tesla, you used to spur the development of the. Chevy Volt. Yeah, because I, I wanted to uh, really leapfrog Toyota with all of the accolades. They were be, being elevated to uh, godlike status to because, because of the Prius. And I, and I was <laughs> convinced that Toyota's next act was going to be a fully electric car. Right. So I wanted to do one at least as a show car. And um, I was told that the only good reason I heard was the whole automobile industry is in litigation with the state of California over the EV mandates. How's it going to look for our case if we're litigating against California and then we put one on the show stand? Well, that argument I kind of understood. But the, yeah. all the other arguments were, well, lithium-ion isn't going to work. Uh, lithium-ion is years away from being, um, from being capable of being a, a, a car battery. And then um, Tesla announced the Roadster with, uh, I think it was zero to 60 in like four and a half seconds, 120 Point mile an hour range, top yeah, speed, yeah. 200 mm. mile range, which I thought, wow. Mm. And uh, <coughs> so I said, okay, I mean, this is outrageous. Here is a, a small uh, startup car company on the West Coast, obviously very confident about lithium ion batteries, is gonna go into production with this car and we, um, many of us would still say technologically the most competent didn't always show it, but right. technologically one, the most competent car company in the world, and we say it can't be done. So then we got into the, well, maybe let's take a look phase, which was uh, the beginning of the Volt development. Whether Tesla is ever hugely successful or not, I'll, I'll always owe him a debt of gratitude for having kind of broken the ice. Bob Lutz being a champion of electric cars is quite a switch from the Bob Lutz we used to know. He sold the board on the fact that this technology would leapfrog Toyota, which had been GM's nemesis. The electric car was pushed all the way up the ladder by Lutz himself in a, in a way that is very, very personal, a way that uh, suggests he regards it as his legacy at the company. How is the Chevy Volt doing? It's, uh, last I checked, it's doing well. Yeah. And, uh, it, and it's done everything you intended it for yes, to do. Yes, and what it is is uh, people keep thinking, well, the Chevy Volt is a failure because they only do this many a month. This is all production related. I mean, we're still in the ramp up phase and um, it, it's only being distributed in certain parts of the country right now. We started with California and with Washington, D.C. And it was, remember Coors Beer, you know, it yes, sort of yeah, did its yeah. long march across right. the From United Denver States. Down. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, it's kind of that way with the Chevy Volt. Chevy Volt is doing extremely well, and in terms of customer satisfaction, it's just about off the chart. I'd driven a lot of things during my, my long career, and uh, to drive a fully electric car, lap after lap after lap around the grounds here, I really uh, had the feeling of it being a historic moment certainly was in my career Thank are you on board that the united states should lose its addiction to oil uh, i would certainly hope so yeah. and, and uh, certainly uh, primarily i would like to see it lose its addiction to imported oil that's well, that, that would be the well, highest priority whether it's canned or anywhere else well, I mean, let's say fr friendly Canadian tar sands would be in the, I would, I would count that as domestic. No. Yeah, uh, <laughs> probably true. Uh, 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 making, ga <laughs> making gasoline out of, I mean, we, um, if, if we have a need for petroleum products in the future, and we will for many more yeah. years, because electrification of the car fleet is not going to occur uh, with, totally within the next 10 to 20 years. Is the electric car back to the dead? Well, you could argue, it, was it ever dead? Because I think people were, even after we recalled the EV1s, uh, there were still electric vehicles out there. And, but I think it's back with a vengeance. And I would say the electrification of the automobile is a foregone conclusion.
Um, it's going to be a gradual transition. Meanwhile, we'll still need a lot of oil. We'll need oil for jet liners and so forth. But, you know, the, the Germans fought World War II with the liquefaction of coal and making gasoline out of coal. There's, there's something. And we, we've got the world's largest coal deposits. The technology to create, make gasoline out of it exists, and nobody's talking about it. I don't understand it. All right. Mm -hmm. um, do you accept his idea that he doesn't believe that uh, global warming is produced by no, <laughs> man-made man activities, male, you know, human beings' activities. Well, um, <coughs> you don't you know believe the, that, do you? <laughs> uh, so <laughs> he's um, going to get himself in trouble <laughs> like I did. <laughs> no. So the, the way I look at the the CO2 thing is that um, we're we're running an experiment, which is to see what the CO2 capacity of the oceans and atmosphere is before Earth gets cooked. I, I don't think that's a wise experiment. That experiment, let's say that experiment is 99% likely to show that CO2 is no problem, but 1% likely to show that it's going to cook the planet. I don't think we want to take that 1% chance. It's yeah. just not smart. You think 1% is the right number? I think it's more than 1%. You think it's what? Mm. Well, it depends on, on, on when and how many trillions of CO2 get pumped into the atmosphere. Yeah. Th there's no question that at a certain level uh, it will destroy the Earth or destroy large portions mm -hmm. of the Earth. Um, the question is just what is that level? Um, and 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 how soon do do we do we stop pumping vast quantities of CO2 into the atmosphere? Um, given that oil and, and even coal uh, are a finite resource, it doesn't seem to make sense that we would run that experiment when we have to get off them anyway, mm -hmm. because they're simply finite. What was your motivation to do all this? Um, so my motivation, uh, actually, for for all, all my companies, has been that. Uh, uh, to be involved in, in something that I thought would have a significant effect on the world. Um, and when I was in college, there were three areas that I thought would most affect the world. One was the internet, the other was sustainable energy, both production and consumption, and the third was uh, space exploration, particularly making life multiplanetary. So as things have turned out, I've been able to be involved in all three. What, what are you doing in terms of the planetary exploration? Uh, uh, well, well SpaceX, uh, yeah, right. uh, so... Well, a, private, <laughs> a private rocket company. <laughs> um, y yeah, so, so N NASA selected my company, right. uh, SpaceX... Well, I want you to tell them about uh, it. Oh, okay, <laughs> sure, sure. Um, so, um, uh, I, I run two companies, Tesla and, and SpaceX. Right. Uh, SpaceX is short for Space, uh, space Exploration Technologies, right. um, and uh, we, we build giant rockets and spacecraft, and NASA selected us to take over the cargo transport function of the space shuttle. Uh, we'll be doing our first mission to the space station uh, hopefully in January, um, so that, that, that'll be a big milestone. We, we've done several rocket, rocket launches already, um, and we, we build the whole rocket from scratch uh, in, in California, actually. Mm -hmm. Raw metal comes in, we build the engines, the, the structure, of avionics, guidance, control. And then we launch from Cape Canaveral and from, and we will be launching. This from makes him your kind of guy, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. He's yeah. a hard work guy. I, I, I should, I should, <laughs> in, 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 may, may I say that I really like Bob Lutz, yeah. uh, by the way. Have you read his book here, though, uh, Car I've, Guys versus Bean Cow? I've not received a copy of his book. But you heard him talking about it and you told but me you agreed with most of the things he said. Yes, I, I, I actually agree with most of the things that, that, that Bob says, and I have a lot of respect for Bob. I just want that to be clear, because sometimes people may sort of make it out that, I, that somehow I, I, I don't, don't like Bob, but I actually I, I have a tremendous amount of respect for, for Bob and think he's awesome. Well, you actually. want to come here and peer with him. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's the biggest challenge for the, how did you say, the electrification of the fleet? I, I think I think Bob articulated it well, which is that um, we we have a vast number of vehicles that that uh, that are gasoline. Um, we we need to make, therefore, a vast number of compelling electric vehicles. Just spooling up that production line and switching out the install base will take decades. Mm -hmm. um, so we will have um, an, an an addiction to oil for some period of time. The the question is really, can we minimize that time? And in doing so, minimize the potential damage to uh, to, to the environment. Right. Uh, much success to you. Thank you. Uh, the Tesla S will be available when? Uh, we will start deliveries in July of next year. In July of 2012. Yeah, we've already sold out of next year's production, though. And what's the annual production? We, we will be producing at about 20,000 units a year. Although starting since it takes a little time, bit of time for the production lines to fill up, we'll be producing about five or six thousand cars next year. And where are they produced? Where in, in the California? In California. Yeah. Fremont. Fremont. Yeah. Yeah.
It's, it's the old the old uh, Toyota GM plant uh, called Numi. 